It's time for a mail call. Included in here are three big books that I got recently. I haven't opened them up yet. Um, one checks something off my 2024 want list. I might do something crazy with one of the others. Stay tuned to see what I got and what I'm going to do with them. Up next on this video from Bronzeville Comics. Hello panelologists, this is Jim from Bronzeville Comics coming to you with another video. Before we get started, like, comment, subscribe. Follow us on other social medias. I'm on Instagram at Bronzeville underscore comics. I'm also on whatnot, Bronzeville underscore comics. We do sales every Monday night at 10 p.m. Eastern Time. And this next uh, Monday on the 1st of April, April Fool's Day, we're going to be doing a huge Archie show. Lots of silver and bronze Archie, some 10 centers as well. Um, so if you're interested in Archie, check it out. There is a link in the description of this video that will get you $10 off your first purchase on whatnot if you've not yet used the platform, and that purchase does not have to be with me. In addition, um, in the description of this video is my email um, as well as my eBay store. So, um, I've been buying some books online, probably more than I should, and it's time to do an unboxing. And I know I have three big books in here that are all personal collection books. Uh, so I'm kind of excited to dig them out and take a look at them. Uh, a couple Golden Age books, a Silver Age key, and um, I'm not sure what else I got. This is an eBay win. This could be one of those um, those Golden Age books. I'm not sure. I think, did I buy, because this is a little bit thicker box, did I buy a, um, a set? Um, I'm going to just kind of fast forward through the opening. So we're ready to reveal the book. Okay, so this is a, um, it looks pretty well packaged um, for patent information only. I don't know what to deal with the laminate packaging. I don't know what this is. Um, so let's just, got scotch tape. I haven't completely removed it, but I, this is one of the big books that I was talking about. Um, this was an eBay win, and how much did I pay for this? eBay purchase history. There we go. Uh, all in, $267.09. Um, and I think, I hope, <laughs> I hope that was a good deal based on the condition of this book. Um, this is a book that is going into my May 1946 collection, and I've been kind of really... Um, adding to that collection recently and so here it is they had it listed as a fine minus i believe in terms of the condition of the book there we go it is a pretty nice looking copy i saw a wrecked copy of this um on ebay that just it wasn't wasn't worth it i'm trying to look for a little bit higher grade so this is Pep Comics number 56, classic Archie cover. Betty's like, so you had to break your date with me to visit your sick grandmother, eh? And he's coming out of the tunnel of love with Veronica. So, um, yeah, this is pretty cool. Now, I, I will say this. This is the May 46 collection. You'll notice it says on the cover March. At this point in time, Pep Comics was quarterly. Uh, so the next issue didn't come out until, uh, j well, three months later, it had a June cover date. Uh, and so this would have been the book that still would have been around uh, when the May cover dates came out. That's kind of the way I look at it. If it's like a spring cover date or if it um, is April, May, or in this case, uh, March, April, May. And... Um, Let's take a look at the book, because this is one of the, I guess, the earlier Archie covers. Let's see, because, let's see, 23. I'm just taking a look. In 1942, it came out monthly, it looks like. 34. And then it started to slow down at 44. And 45, 1, 2, 3... And like Archie, 
took over the covers really uh, the shield was still on them until about issue 48 so this is one of the first solo archie covers 45, 45, 45. yeah by about 1945 it was down to um quarterly and i'm not sure why if you have more information if you're more of an archie aficionado you can leave it in the comments below so this is a pretty nice copy it does have some tanning on the edges um and i'm going to do a quick page count because you always have to do that especially with golden age books there is it's, there is some some wear on the spine but let's take a look at the inside the staples look pretty solid a little bit of tearing but not bad so i'm going to do the page count and i just want to make sure that i don't have any remnants of tape on my desk i'm just going to do a quick page count it, it actually has a nice amount of gloss two four five captain commando six seven eight the twiddles nine ten eleven twelve nice centerfold one two three four five six seven eight nine ten ten eleven twelve yeah archie is the lead feature but and the cover feature but we still have the shield and dusty the boy detective there are other it's kind of an interesting um cross between the I guess romantic teen comedy of Archie and the superheroes. The shield is in here, and there's also a uh, Captain Commando story. That's a superhero did not wear any underpants. Another humor um, in the twiddles, another humor feature, and there was another. Um, Willie Wise Guy, and then there's another Archie S character of Susie. So that is a nice book. Uh, I guess I'll put that back in the Mylar. So intact. Now this book in graded. Mid grade, let's say a five ish now i am not of my and i'll go more into detail on this later because i do have another may 46 book in here um i don't uh typically i haven't gotten any of them graded uh and i don't have any solid plans to at this point in time i kind of want to get most of the books collect them read them and kind of when i have them all together just to kind of get a nice snapshot of what comic books were like in that period of time now a 5.0 sold in 2018 for 310 a 4.0 sold for 264 and a 3.0 sold in the last year for 222 so considering the condition of this book and that i paid 267 i think that was a good deal um, I'm thinking uh, somewhere in the five to six range for this book. So, you know, it's hard to tell, but uh, I think it's worth more than what I paid for it. I'm not looking to flip it. So it's just getting a good deal on a book um, for this collection. And I'm also kind of trying to get you know, for golden a golden age collection, get nicer presenting books. So I had I had my eye on different copies of this. This came up in an eBay auction, and I jumped on it and I got it. So yeah, especially with golden age, like that aren't real huge keys, you can sometimes get that kind of deal. Okay, so let's go to the next. This is a I believe that's a whatnot win. And I have no idea what this is. 
Okay, so this is from Gotham Thrift NY. Um, they're on all the time. <laughs> and I thought this was a pretty good deal. I picked it up for $11 plus shipping. And it is uh, yet another copy for me of... Was this 421? Yeah. Adventure Comics 421. The first appearance of Black Orchid. Does present pretty nicely. Does have a little bit of a thing going up there at the top. But uh, I'll take a closer look at this. Um, if you've been watching the channel, I have picked... I kind of pick this book up when I see it. I do have an original copy. I have no idea what condition it is. I I'm not, I'm not sure if I picked this up when it came out. It would have been 19 I believe it's 73. Um so I would have been like 6 or 7 years old. Uh but I did pick this up at some point whether it was at a show when I was like 12 or something, but I I've always had a copy of that as long as I can remember in my collection. Okay, up next, this is from Very Gary, and it seems like there's multiple books in here. So Gary has these comic-sized bubble mailers. You just kind of slide the comics in and out of that. He included, which I need, <laughs> um, a advertisement for King Con 5. I will be set up there, as will Gary and Erod and... A whole bunch of other folks in the community. Um, it is next Saturday. Coming up way quicker than I am prepared for in Park Ridge, New Jersey. At the Park Ridge Marriott. It's going to be a great show. Um, it always is. I'm really looking forward to it. And um, i got to get myself prepared. So, oh, oh yeah, I picked... Oh, wow, this is... Okay. And I... I so, this is... There's one book I... I don't know. I see a couple of ticks. This is a book I can... I really want a 9.8. I have yet to get one. But it, it, it's a book... This does need a press, maybe, because... Um, the spine ticks look like... Yeah, it's on the black, so it's tough. This is Simpsons Comics and Stories, number one. Now, this... I got a... Yeah. The three-book lot of this... Issue number one and Bartman number one for $21. So these are worth looking at to see if they they are gradable copies because these Simpsons, these bongos go for a little bit of a value in 9.8. And this is not Bongo. Um, bongo published all the Simpsons. I forget who published this, but this came out a little bit earlier. It's the first appearance of Simpsons in comics. It's a one shot. Um, I really want that in 9.8. There's a huge jump in price from 9.6 to 9.8. And then I believe this is the second print, this Adam Hughes Batgirl cover. Uh, New 52, number one. This did have some significance because there was a character in here who was slated to appear in the... Um, I'm trying to think of the best way to describe it. The, the, the canceled... Um, the, the tax write-off Batgirl movie. We have another whatnot purchase here. So I don't exactly remember what I bought. Um, this was from Post War Comics, and they had this little flyer from Gold Key Comics. Now, somebody has purchased the IP, the original IP of Gold Key, um, and is uh, re releasing some of these um, books like the Boris Karloff. Gold Key Mysteries. Um, I'm not sure what other characters that they have rights to, um, but uh, if you're a Gold Key fan, uh, there are coming up with new stories. They were using the IP. So this I bought. Uh, I got this for nine dollars. It's a pretty decent copy. I'm gonna take a closer look at it. Probably not gradable. Maybe hold on to the. Next. So this is a Spectacular Spider-Man 100. This is, I think, the second appearance of Spot as Spot. So, again, sometimes I'm just on, online and I just find myself buying stuff. Not the best idea. So up next, I have three packages left. This is a big package. So it is a slab. And it's a May 1946 slab. So uh, stay tuned. I'm not sure... Exactly what I'm going to do with this. I have an idea. Okay. 
So this is a May 1946 book uh, that I bought at auction on eBay for, what did I pay for this? I paid all in $215.55. Now, the same um, book in, I think, uh, had sold for like $300 earlier or sometime last year so i thought it was just a really great deal same book same grade so i do have a lot more unpacking to do because there's a box in the bag and the bags in the box and yeah uh, so on and so forth so but might not be the last thing i open up okay so this is a copy of Airboy Volume 3, number 4, from May 1946, in off-white to white, pa off -white pages. CGC 5.5 off-white pages. Now, my next question, and I'm going to take it out of the, the mylar they have it in, because I want to take, sorry about the sound. Um, I want to take a closer look at the slab itself. I'll give it to you guys. You have some something there. Carl. That looks to be in pencil. There is some there is some yellow uh tanning you can see up here with some spots. A little bit of a dog ear kind of there. The spine is reasonably nice though. A little bit of a stain there. And then back cover. Now, staples look quite solid. But there is can't help that's some paper loss up there. But I'm of the belief. Now, I don't know how much room there is on this. That this has never been cleaned or pressed. It's an early slab. Um, it starts with 162. 709. So I'm going to look up the grader's notes. 2023. Oh, it doesn't have... Uh, okay, no. Light creasing to cover. Light pieces out to cover. Light staining to cover. Moderate cover tanning. Moderate spine stress lines to cover. Okay. Now, yeah, I don't think this has ever been cleaned or pressed. So, there's a heap appearance in here. Um, I don't know, Airboy's fighting some aliens. I can see in this, it looks, you know, through the case, there is some tanning. There, there looks to be some pressable defects there, but, you know, we have pieces missing. I'm not sure. I mean, getting Carl out, I think, would help. That would be tricky, though it's mostly in the white, but you do have those black streaks. That would be, that's a tricky, but I think overall the cover could use a little bit of cleaning to bring it out. There is some a tanning that's not going to be improved, but let's go crazy. I bought this with the idea of cracking it out. Why? One simple reason. I want to read it. And if there is the opportunity at some point to resubmit it for a higher grade after working on it, so be it. Comes back the same grade. Uh, that's, you know, I really don't care. I have no intentions, uh, since this is part of my May 46 collection, I don't have any intention, there we go, of. Uh, I'm uh, point of no return here, folks. I'm doing this at the bottom. That's a little bit risky. I just got to get the screwdriver in without hurting myself or, more importantly, the comic book because I heal will heal more easily. I hope. Yeah, this is. I can feel. There we go. Ooh, ouch! 
almost pinched myself. All right. So I am cracking this out of the slab. Maybe I'll do better off at the top. It's hard to find this. Yeah, I can get the seam up here. Because you have, do have a lot of room between the top of the slab and the book itself. Up where the label is. And this kind of brings me to my two minds when it comes to slabbing. Do you protect the book? Yes. Do you increase the value of the book? Most likely. But we never get to enjoy it. But I bought. why did I buy it graded? Because it was certainty of what it was, right? It's a mid-grade copy, but for its age, you know, I paid 200 bucks for it, which I thought was a good deal, right? And probably better, I probably would have been hard-pressed to get a book in this kind of mid-grade raw copy for significantly less than that. There we go. There we go. Okay. I did rip the uh, <laughs> the label, but that's okay. I will keep that with the book. There we go. Cracky crack. All righty. Can I just pull it open now? This is exciting, right? So, yep, I'm cracking it open. <laughs> so, ooh, that's a little dangerous because now the book is exposed to this sharp part of the slab. Let's see if I can, yeah. There we go. I have not cracked a lot of books out. least valuable book I've ever cracked out. I have to be careful because there is that little shard, sharp shard there. Get it out of the, get the inner well out. And then there's the nerve wracking test. There we go. Okay. Slab is cracked. Don't need the screwdriver anymore. And you could criticize me on my technique of opening slabs. I'm not as good as some people, you know. The Mark Jeweler guy didn't do that. And now we have the book in the inner well. Ooh, how am I going to extricate this from the inner well? I like to use scissors and not a a blade, you know. I don't just like to go shoop. That I need to, where are my scissors? Should have enough room here at the bottom. Cutting. I don't really have the setup. To do like overhead shots and what have you. Action shots of me taking this out of the inner well. Yeah, this has definitely never been pressed so oof that is this is nerve-wracking not as nerve-wracking as when i cracked out batman adventures 12 and a 9.6 i think i could slide it out at this point There we go. Extricated from... Yeah, this definitely has not been cleaned or pressed. And it is... It actually... So we do have tanning. And if we look on the inside front cover... It's not terrible. The tanning is not terrible. There's a little dog ear there. That can be worked on and minimize but there's there's bed i mean if we look in the in the right light the spine i can get it in the light there's definitely pressable defects there the staples are solid but even look 
that can be cleaned. There's that small piece missing. Gloss is nice. This is a nice copy. Uh, I'm happy with this. And I'm happy to have it out of the slab because you know what I'm going to actually do? And this is bonkers. I'm going to read the book. Not right now. I'm going to I kind of put all my 1946 books together. Um, let me know what you think if you if you do press and cleaning. I should be able to get Carl off the cover, right? Um, the question is, can I get rid of it entirely? That is the biggest question. So I'm going to just, is there micro chamber paper in here? Yep. I'm going to leave that in here for now. Yeah, this is this is a nice book. You got um, the Skywolf story. With, I don't know. I didn't realize the heap was like white. So, let me know. If you do cleaning and pressing... That, that Carl looked like somebody started to erase it and never finished the job. So this is going in a Golden Age bag and board. This is a Golden Age, yeah. And it's going to go right in my 1946 collection. Where is... I've made a little bit of a mess of things. Ah. You see, my screwdriver work uh, did harm... <laughs> the label so the label's going to go in here and if at some point in the future i decide to um resubmit this i'm going to resubmit it uh you know compare it i have the original label to compare it to and it's also a good uh, indication of what um condition the book is in i mean right now it's it sits at a five five raw and I'm fine with that. But I do think if I did resubmit this, there is room for improvement. Now, this is this a book that ordinarily, just for its sake alone, I would CPR? No, I don't think there's a big value increase. Even if I get this to a, from a 5.5 five to a 6.5, not a big value increase. But I want this for the collection, and I can always choose to resubmit it. Um, and I think there is opportunity to get a better grade. I'm very happy with that. I have two more packages gonna open the next one another whatnot sale and i'll be back after i open it up now this is a fun book i saw this in a whatnot stream and i had looked at it and i had seen other people posting it it's i think this is from 1976 i'm not sure january 76 but it's kind of one of the few DC keys from post-1971 that I didn't have. And I'm not sure if it's one of the, the, the kind of the top 10 keys of that year. And it's Secrets of the Haunted House number five with this classic Bernie Wrightson cover. Now, it does have some defects on it. A couple spine ticks, a little tear up there um, at the top. But... Overall, I, I don't think this is a gradable copy, but this is a nice PC copy. I mean, it could improve with the press, but it's uh, probably like in the 7 to 8 range, just on a quick glance. But I got it for, what did I get it for? I think 20 bucks. I think that's pretty good. Um, I'm not sure of the value of that book off the top of my head. I mean, I paid uh, shipping as well, so figure 25 or so of the haunted house number five. Yeah, VG copies. Ooh. A VG sold for 65 recently. Uh, a fine sold for 25. So, I mean, even an eight. An eight just a graded eight just sold for two fifty five, and a seven point five the two days before Halloween sold for two seventy three. So I mean that might I might reverse course on the idea that whether or not this is worth getting graded. 
Like, a, if this is an 8, which I think is a stretch, even if it's a 7, maybe? I don't know. I'm going to keep it for now. I'll eventually read it and then um, make a decision. So the last package here, this is a key. This is getting something that I'm ticking off my um, 19 or my 2024 want list. It's the second book off the want list. And it has a similarity with another book I picked up earlier in terms of the issue number and kind of the significance and also the uh, the era. So um, I, uh, I'm i going to talk about this because it's a big key. I got this off of Robot Monster Island. He does um, frequent sales, has a lot of inventory, doesn't do grading of books. So you can get some, and he's he starts everything at a buck. Uh, pretty he's straightforward with what he has. Um, you know, he describes approximate conditions. Since he doesn't do grading, he's not making a differentiation between 9, 2, 9, 4, 9, 6, 9, 8 um, for more modern books. But um, on Saturday, he does, like, big keys. He does, like, all keys. Nothing but keys on Saturday nights. So I was on a Saturday show, I guess, a week and a half ago. And... Uh, there was this book. This book was in the Buy It Now. And I had seen it in his Buy It Now previously, but it was a little bit more than I wanted to pay for it. So I kind of held off. And uh, just, I was I was looking for a, a nicer, a, ni a nice solid mid-grade copy of this book. And um, he was putting some bigger books up for... Uh, $1 starts from his buy it now. And some of them were going for above fair market value because there were over 100 people in the room. So I just mentioned this book and he grabbed it and he put it up for starting at a dollar. And I got it, I think it was for, I don't know if the receipt's in here, I think it was for $330. He had it, I think, for $550 in his buy it now. Now his buy it now is probably a little bit north of fair market value. Um, but three thirty, I think, was quite the deal on this book. He had it graded at a five point oh, and it definitely needs a press. At some point, it will get a press. There's a little of this split down at the bottom spine. So this is a book I I had been wanting. Showcase number thirty four. The first appearance of Ray Palmer, the Silver Age Adam. Gil Kane cover. Very happy to have this in the collection. I've been looking for that. And this kind of pairs nicely with a month or so ago, I got a copy of Brave and the Bold, number 34, the first appearance of the Silver Age Hawkman. Um, so I'm going to take a quick look at the book. Just to do the page count, do my due diligence. Obviously... Um, RMI is a trusted seller. Has, you know, a pretty much an impeccable reputation selling on whatnot. And uh, I, I got a great deal on this. He had gotten a great deal for me uh, on a low grade Lois Lane, uh, like earlier in the week. So uh, I got this. This is PC all the way. So very few books here tonight are to resell definitely definitely needs a press but nice gloss on the cover does have a store stamp that will not that does not negatively affect the grade the biggest defect is right there that is let me measure that if we measure it it's about a half an inch tear so a half inch tear, I mean, maxes you out at an 8.5. There are other defects with the book that, um, you know, will. Staples look pretty solid. There is a little bit of stress at the staples, but nothing terrible. The page quality looks good. Centerfold is very solid. I'm familiar with the story because his origin was reprinted. And what's weird about this is the cover is 
the B story. There are two stories in here, the origin story and then his first story. I think in the origin, he does not don his costume. Does he or does he? No, I don't think so. Yeah, he's in his in his civvies. And this book, by the way, is from September, October 1961. So still pretty early in the Silver Age. This is around the same time as FF number one. Right? Does this predate the man in the anthill? I'm not sure if it does or not. It's right around the same time. And it's it's similar, like, you know, he shrinks, he's in a cave. Um, so I am very happy with this book. It does have some spine stress, but I don't see any stains. The tanning is minimal. The pressable defects are many. No big creases, just that one tear. So very happy to have that in the collection i'm i i still need uh ironically of silver age first appearances well obviously green lantern and flash for justice leaguers i have i think all the justice leaguers well not yeah, who became members no i don't have the elongated man yet uh, after after uh the team formed adam joined in issue number 14 of justice league and Hawkman in 28, I believe. I might be wrong on that number. But this is ah, very, very happy. A great deal from Robot Monster Island. Again, his Saturday shows are the ones where they, they have the big books. But he has sales all the time. Um, and what hap works for me, I'm not sure. He's not located, I don't think, on the West Coast. But his shows are later. So I tend to, like, you know, like right now I'm in the comic room. It's 2 a.m. I'm doing this video. I am not going to work tomorrow. Um, and, uh, the, um, you know, everybody else is asleep and I have time to, you know, if I, I'm a lot of times if I'm sitting here, uh, sorting comic books, I'll just check out whatnot streams. And I was doing that on sat that Saturday. I think my wife wasn't feeling well. The kids had gone to bed early. They fell asleep and, um, check, check it off the 2024 want list. So, as I said, three big books um, obtained in this mail call. And I was waiting. The, the Adam just came today. And I was kind of holding off until I had all the books to do a video. Um, let me know what you think of the books. Let me know what you think about me cracking that Airboy slab out. Like I said, I just want to read it. All my May 1946 books are raw. Every single one of them. I don't have... That was the first graded book I got. And now it's no longer graded. Um, it is now a raw book that was graded. So the, the nice thing about buying that, especially buying online when you get a good deal, is you know you, you have more certainty that there's no restoration um, and you do have a very good idea of what the grade is. Now, if I just submitted that book tomorrow without doing anything to it, you know, could it get a five? Yeah. Could it get a six? Yeah. More than likely, the I guess the most likely outcome is a 5.5. I don't think it would do too much further than that, right? And the hopeful thing is if I do want to resubmit it at some point, and probably when I go through the May 46 collection and get most of them together, the higher value books, the books that are a couple hundred dollars or more, that probably being one of them would be submitted to CGC. That's possible. Um, but that's a ways down the road, right? Um, so, you know, since I'm not, um, reselling those books, I'm not looking to submit them right now because why spend, especially because that's a vintage, a little bit more money. Why spend the money on grading the book now when I don't need to have it graded to resell, right? Um, maybe at some point, if I get a whole bunch of them graded, I can have a display of the graded books, but now I just kind of like to uh, look through the, all the raw books uh, that I do have in the collection. So thanks for stopping by and spending some time with me, watching me uh, talk about comics and open some packages. You know, it's not, I mean, I, I, I'm not sure one of the more exciting things to watch is uh, people going through their mail, but this was comic books. It wasn't bills or anything or junk mail. So anyway, let me know what you think about the purchases. I'm pretty happy. I'm also happy with that haunted house book. Um, and we'll see. I mean, maybe, just maybe, uh, those Simpsons books might be gradable. And, uh, you know, 
can come back in the in the nine eight. That would be awesome. So anyway, thanks for stopping by. Um, you can check out a couple of my other videos here. And this is Jim saying until next time, enjoy your comics.